Hello, everyone, and welcome to our wonderful community forum for Mesa College. We will let everyone start checking in. Let us know you're here through our chat. This is the Mesa College Community Forum number three for May the 6th. And yes, I am in my office on campus. It's a beautiful day on our campus. I apologize for looking down because I will have notes from time to time. Uh, but happy to, to see you all and uh, happy May. We made it to May. So hello, everyone. Nice to see you all here. Thanks for signing in through chat. Already have 50 people on board, so that's exciting. Hi, everyone. This is so cool to see everybody. Welcome back. I'll be I'll be dropping some knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sullivan, Dr. Sullivan. Good to see everybody. Hey, Malik. Missed that smile. Nice to see our peer navigators on board. Our wonderful librarians, our student services professionals. Hey, City College, thanks for joining us. Love to have City College on board. Hey, leaners. It is a beautiful day. Nice to see you, Dina. It is an absolutely beautiful day here on the Mesa. Okay. Lots of you folks are checking in with us. Hello, everyone. Buenas tardes, Tony. Thank you. Skyler. Nice to see everybody checking in. So first of all, as you're all checking in, I just want to say that um, it's really a, an honor and a pleasure to be the president of Mesa College. And every day I'm so grateful to be able to work with all of you, um, the leading College of Equity and Excellence. So while you're checking in, one of the things I wanted to do was uh, a shout out. Now that we started doing these things, I see myself like quoted in newspapers and things. So um, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. It's kind of, a, as I said, a weird thing to sit and talk into a microphone to a couple hundred people. But I wanted to give out a thank you. Um, one of the things that someone observed in a couple of our um, in a couple of our uh, forums was that I did not have Mesa merch uh, merchandise on board. And so, first of all, shout out to Honors. We're in the Honors. This is what excellence looks like T-shirt today. But I also want to give a shout out to Ryan Shoemaker and his beautiful wife Cassie, who made a number of us these incredible Mesa tumblers. So I've got, you know, I've got this loaded up with water, just water. But on the back, you can see it says Prez Pam. Isn't that awesome? Okay, but on the bottom, equity and excellence. So these are pretty cool. These are just amazing. So thank you. Thank you, Ryan, and your beautiful wife. And, and hope everybody's staying safe out there. Uh, and thank you for that. So it is swagadelic. Thank you, Chris. So, um, yeah, it is, it is pretty cool. Hello, everyone. Hi, Christy. Nice to see you, too. Uh, so we'll let a few more folks ch uh, ch uh, get in with us. It's about 1.34. We'll wait another minute, and then people will be starting to come in. There's about 130 of you that are online with us right now, which is amazing. Okay, so I should have brought the business card for the wonderful woman that Cassie made these with, Ryan. So if you want to post the info in chat, you're more than welcome to. Because um, they really do a nice job for us. Nice cuff. Yes, thank you, Ryan. All right. Hey, Christine, thank you. Okay, so you can clearly see that I have not violated any of the rules around going to your hairdresser, right? Like, hello, Greytown. So uh, we'll see how this goes, but uh, the hair gets longer and grayer, but you know what, it is what it is. So, um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Thank you to those of you who submitted questions on our Google form, because we have some great questions, but let me just start by saying that, you know, here we are several weeks into this um, COVID-19 situation that we find ourselves in. And 
One of the things that I think is really important for us to think about is the fatigue that we're probably feeling um, around Zooming a lot of the day, the fatigue our students feel and that we feel, because even when you spend time on Zoom, you still have to go do your homework or you still have to be able to um, you know, step away from that screen and your real life is right in front of you because you're in your home. So whether you're caring for parents or other significant others, you're trying to homeschool your children. And yes, the other day I almost got kicked out of my own chancellor's cabinet meeting because both of the little people in my life were Zooming with their uh, kindergarten and first grade teachers. Uh, so I had to run around the house asking people to get off the Wi-Fi, not the kids. I wanted the kids connected, but everyone else had to disconnect. So we know that everybody's dealing with this and we're trying to put some mitigating things in place so that we can um, help folks out. So just want you to know that, that, that I am personally aware of the hardships that people are facing, but I'm also personally aware of these incredible stories that people are telling about their ability to stay connected to Mesa and that being their lifeline right now. So when we have students or faculty or our classified professionals, our managers, we know that everyone's dealing with this differently. And, but when I hear stories that say, I know it's hard, but when I can connect to the Mesa community, I feel like I'm valued, I feel like I'm heard, that gets me out of bed every day. So as you wend your way through this process and have people giving you, um, you know, explanations and, and telling their stories, let's listen to each other's stories in this time. Um, because it is really super important. And yes, thank Espen, mental, mental health really critical. And there's a session later today with our health center that people can log into. So let me jump into um, a couple of questions that are on everyone's minds. For those of you who are employees in the district, you would have received our chancellor's COVID-19 update yesterday, uh, where she uh, declared us for the most part to be online for the fall semester. And there are some conditions in that. Of course, we will follow whatever the state county guidelines are on shelter in place or wherever we're allowed to be during those times, whatever phase that we're in. Um, if you follow what the governor's doing, there are many phases that are there. Um, and so we will have to rely on that. There, there are a number of efforts underway to share best practices, not just in California, not just in community colleges, but across higher education to figure out a way for us to be able to do uh, labs um, in, in areas like the sciences and allied health and culinary arts, some of our you know, art curriculum and places where we know face-to-face -face and demonstration of skills is really important. Um, and we are working with those. Um, I am really honored that um, I am, uh, was asked to be by our state chancellor on a group called the Safe Campus Reopening Task Force. Um, and we are working together with professionals from the Academic Senate, Classified Professionals, Student Senate, um, and places all over the state to find out what are some of the effective practices that we could recommend. In fact, this morning at 7 o'clock a.m., we were on with three uh, chancellors and presidents from the state of Texas community college systems, Dallas, Austin, and, um, and really looking at, and El Paso, sorry, Dallas uh, and El Paso, um, and Austin, who are ahead of us. Um, think what you may about the politics of however states open, they will be opening earlier. And so they have done a lot of the groundwork. And so we're hoping to really benefit from our connections to other parts of the country and also to community colleges that are in the state. And that's anything from uh, safety of our facilities and the sanitation and the kinds of things that we need to do to understanding how schedules might be done, understanding how much we can do online and how much uh, we need to do in you know, a face-to-face -face environment, looking at professional development, not just for our faculty, but classified professionals and managers as well, uh, looking at schedules and flexibility. So we're, we're trying to get all the best advice we have. No one's lived through this before. We have some, some folks that went through the the, you know, 1918, but that's been a little while. Um, and so we don't have a lot of folks that have experienced this kind of pandemic. And so we're doing our best to gather the very best information that we can. So stay tuned for that. Um, also wanted to let you know that um, as we do this, uh, we will be, of course, following the protocols that I talked about, and there will be stages for returning. We may have some offices, for instance, the president's office, um, if we can do safe distancing and, and be able to do our work, 
Uh, I know Beth and Gio and I feel much more efficient when we share space together. We feel as though running a college remotely between our three houses um, does not provide uh, the most um, connected feeling for the rest of campus. So we're trying to figure those things out. We do, of course, have essential workers on campus. And thanks to our facilities folks um, and our own facilities folks, our stockroom folks, uh, you know, Frank and Arthur and, and our wonderful Jacqueline and our business services folks have been here doing the budget because the budget never stops. Uh, and so just thank you to everyone who's, you know, been on campus and keeping everybody safe. We, we really do uh, appreciate that. Just a little side note, we do have our, uh, I like to call them chat cops, um, which, which is a terrible probably way to say it. I, I'm not saying that the cops are terrible, but I'm saying, you know, please be careful about what you say in the chat, keep it civil. This is a positive space. We want to keep these chats positive. If they end up not being positive, we'll probably remove you from the chat. So, you know, thank you for adhering to that. We haven't had too many problems, but thank you for doing that. We really appreciate it. Um, one of the things I am really excited about is we were able to this week on Monday partner with the San Diego Food Bank, and we were able to get some emergency food out to about 220 households. Uh, we prioritize those households based on the needs that we have previously identified either through our COVID-19 emergency fund requests or for students that we know we're already using the stand. We are hoping to expand that so we're able to do it even more. Thank you to the volunteers that came out. We all had masks on uh, and San Diego Food Bank brought out a lot of food to us. And uh, we were able to, uh, people opened up their trunks and we were able to put fruits and vegetables and shelf stable foods uh, in their cars. And, and it was really wonderful to be able to see students, even though we were all seeing them through masks, uh, but it was, it was really exciting. So we're hoping to be able to, to do more of that um, as soon as possible, again, in the safest way we can. For those of you who don't know, parking lot number one is now a Wi-Fi hotspot lot. And so if you would like to come to campus and use our Wi-Fi, um, you're more than welcome to do that. We have the parking lot is uh, cordoned off so you can see where the good Wi-Fi signals are. Um, if it's a hot day, I'd say come in the morning if you can. Um, we are limited to just being able to do uh, people in their vehicles. We know those of you who come to campus in alternative forms would love to do it as well. Unfortunately, we can't do a shelter in place and have you sitting out on a bench on campus because um, this is really, um, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can under the guidelines we have. So you can come to campus. We ask that you be uh, in your vehicle, that you be with those that you're already quarantined with. So if you're a single mom or dad or, you, you know, you have your kids by yourselves and, and they need to do their homework, they are more than welcome to be in the backseat of your car while you do your English homework and they do their Zooms with their teachers so or whatever else they need to do. So, so we're excited to be able to offer that. And I'm going to hope that someone on my team will post the hours of the Wi-Fi in the chat. So, um, yeah, so... Um, if, if you hopefully we'll be able to get that up uh, soon so that we'll be able to do the Wi-Fi pieces. Um, I can tell you that that one of the things we're excited about is as we have these different levels, perhaps there will be an opportunity to open some computer labs on campus, even if we aren't back full time. I'm not going to promise that today, but we are looking at everything we can to keep you connected to campus, both faculty and staff. So great. Wi-Fi lot one is available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8 to 3 on Fridays. So thank you for posting that. Um, also, of course, we've been doing our laptop uh, loaners still. And the best way to get connected with us so that we know what your needs are is to fill out the request form. And I know someone will post that in our chat. There, if you just go to the Mesa College website, the first thing you've seen is COVID-19 and you can click right on that and, and fill out a form that gets you in line for um, looking at the emergency funds that we're putting out. If you need a laptop, if you need connectivity, we're also working on hotspots right now. We know some of you can't get some of the free services that are out there or can't come to campus. So we're looking at that as well. We are really fortunate our chancellor um, was uh, went to our San Diego Foundation and was able to get a half a million dollar grant for all of the colleges in the San Diego region to be able to buy laptops and connectivity. So Mesa is a $75,000 recipient of that grant. 
So we will be purchasing more laptops and we'll be able to get them out to you, probably not tomorrow, uh, but as soon as possible. You can also imagine not all that easy to grab laptops right now because everybody's buying them, uh, but we'll do our best to be able to do that. So um, also wanted to let you know that um, we are working on still the weekly um, fund disbursements. If you've already applied, but you've not yet been um, given any dollars from that fund, we know you need cash. If you haven't had money from that fund yet, don't worry, you're not, your name does not come out. Um, it stays in the fund and we will definitely be able to uh, hopefully award more and more as we go along. Um, if you are wondering about, um, if you're wondering about uh, how the funds work, we are so fortunate to have our college foundation and associated students. Associated students um, just allocated another $8,000 on top of the $20,000 that they had already allocated for more funds for students. So thank you to AS. Uh, Taylor, Robin, and the crew, you guys are doing a fantastic job. So um, great work on that. So we will continue to do that. Let's talk about commencement. Who's excited to talk about commencement? Well, we are, because we have an answer for you now. We are going to have a commencement, and it will be on July the 17th. It will not be in person, but it will be a remote commencement. So you can go ahead and uh, apply to participate. Of course, you know you need to apply for graduation. Uh, but also, once you apply to be part of commencement, I have other good news for you. If you would like a cap and gown and tassel from the class of 2020, we are gifting them to you. We are going to buy caps and gowns and tassels. And because we can't all be together, if you would like those items, all you have to do is fill that out when you sign up to participate in commencement and we will snail mail them out to you. That does a couple of things. One, you get to have a cap and gown in your tassel. Um, and two, we use you know the US Postal Service, not a bad thing right now. So we're happy to be able to, to send that out to you. If you don't want them, you certainly don't have to have them, but we think it's important to get those out to you. You earn them and we'll get them to you. There will be more information about how this commencement will work um, we will be gathering pictures from all of you that want to participate, um, the degrees that you're earning, um, all of those kinds of things, uh, the usual sort of um, speeches and uh, videotapes, um, the student speaker, we're going to be able to replicate much of that. Um, and so we will be working with all of you to get that done. Probably not perfect the, the, the moment you get it, but again, um, we're just excited that we can move forward. Miramar City and Continuing Ed will all be doing commencements as well in this virtual format. If the virtual format is not for you, we will work with you. If you would like to participate in 2021 and walk the stage at that time, you can. The only caveat to that is, uh, you know, we're almost at capacity when we do commencement at University of San Diego. So we just have to monitor the number of students and make sure we've got room for everybody. So um, we're, we are very excited to be able to offer uh, a commencement opportunity. And thank you to our student affairs folks, uh, Dean Vicki and the folks in student affairs that have really been uh, carrying the water on this. And, and we so appreciate that. Um, <laughs> live with Barack and Michelle and Lady Gaga. You know, Espen, um, okay, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. We do usually have a surprise each year for commencement and I don't think this year will be any better, but any, any different, I'm not gonna say any better because we make it better every year. Uh, but we are very excited about doing that. Thank you, Melanie. We'll look to take you up on positive messages for the ceremony because I think that's really um, awesome. So let me go ahead and answer some of the questions that came in. And if my team um, wants to uh, make sure I cover anything, um, if you want to get that to um, uh, Geo or throw it in the chat, I'm, I'm happy to answer it. So we've had some questions on book rentals. If you're renting books, how can you return the book? 
Um, so we are uh, we are looking at providing that option as soon as possible. The bookstore is again working on how you can get those back to us various ways, but you will be able to return them. We will not be charging you overdue fees or anything like that. We will definitely get uh, information to you and that will come out to you um, from the bookstore because of course they know who's rented a book. We will get that out to you. We had a very specific question from a student around taking a chemistry course at another school and wanting it to apply here so that they could take the laboratory. Um, those kinds of questions are best answered by our fantastic counselors. And so if you go to the Mesa College uh, website and there's a button right there that says student services and you click on that, you will be able to see the all of our student services available. If you click on counseling, you can go right in and uh, be able to connect with our counseling folks. So, you know, those kinds of questions, I am in no way prepared to answer specific questions about courses. And if I did, the counselors would kill me. So I'm gonna make sure that we do that. Um, also, someone asked about taking summer courses at Mesa, you're already a university student. And so basically what happens when you take a course at Mesa is as soon as you're done, you can request that transcript once the grades are posted and then that can go over to your university. So that's a process that happens through evaluations and we're happy to help you with that. Um, and you can of course do that right through your, uh, through your uh, My SDCCD. Um, also, we have questions from people who are saying they did applications and um, they haven't heard yet whether or not have they've been admitted. If you go to that same student services page, that's where our admissions folks are and they are working really hard to keep you connected. So you can always connect in with them and they can look you up to see if you're in our system or if something has taken place and we're not quite sure. We have a very ambitious student who wants to take three English courses this summer and is wondering how to do that because they're web courses. Um, what our understanding is, is that most of the English courses are not being um, taught synchronously, which means at a specific time, but it would be very important to check in with the, with the faculty member about any times that students might be required a uh, face-to-face. But I, I don't believe, yes, I knew that Dr. Sullivan would be happy to hear that a student wanted to take three English courses. Um, but anyway, take a look at how that course is listed and you may very well be able to do that just fine. Questions on parking permits. We are refunding parking permits only if the student was signed up for the second eight weeks and never came to campus. Those are the only ones um, that, that we're working on right now. Um, more about summer courses, they will be, they will be online. Um, not all of them are taught asynchronously, which is a distance ed course where the lecture is not scheduled at the same time or the lab is not scheduled at the same time. They might be in different times, but check the schedule. If you have questions, you can always check in um, with counseling or admissions or one of our student services areas, and we can definitely look up the information for you. So uh, check your portal and, and find out um, if there's any notations to your, course, to your courses. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, summer is online. And let's see. Uh, have someone talking about coming back and they're wondering how uh, we do assessment. Well, guess what? Um, you don't have to take those nasty tests anymore, right? For English and other places. We do have, um, you know, definitely some assessment mechanisms to help you get into the right class. So that's a place you can go to assessment under student services and they can answer your questions about what your status might be coming back in after, after being out. All right, and thank you, Katie, for answering that question about the size of our Canvas shells. Um, and uh, I know that Katie will be on that. Uh, let's see, I have a question here from one of our students who works with the Vocational Rehab Department. My recommendation to you on making sure that you're supported through Voc Rehab is to check in with our DSPS um, staff, they are ready, willing, and able to answer your questions. Again, I'm going to reference that same wonderful student services site, and DSPS is right on there. Dis DSPS is our Disabled Students Program, and they will be able to work with you to make sure that um, your connections to um, to vocational rehabilitation are, are working. Um, let's see. 
Let's talk about the EW. Still lots of questions about the excused withdrawal. So someone asked they had to drop their English class due to COVID-19 and can they get the EW? So any student who withdraws or is dropped um, by a faculty member between March 9th and May the 8th, 2020, will have their W changed to an excused withdrawal automatically. Okay, so just, just so you know that. Second to that, someone asks, if I drop a class before May the 8th, can I get a refund and how does that happen? So the refund deadline for semester length classes has been extended to May the 8th. Coming up quickly, today's the 6th. So, and you'll be given a refund in whatever way your fees were paid. Were, were, were paid. So if you paid with the check, you'll get that money back. Um, if, you know, you'll get a check in the mail, probably debit or credit card, it will go back to that card. So, so just know that those things are happening. All right. Those are all the questions that were uh, posed to us um, on our form. And so um, we would be happy to do. So Jason is asking, does the professor drop you or do you have to drop yourself? So Jason, we always encourage students to take control of their own destiny. And so if you know you want to drop your class, the best way to do that is to go into your own portal and do that. Um, so I think it's really uh, smart that you're asking that question, but we always encourage students to uh, take that action themselves. But May the 8th, right? So that's coming up. And um, that's a great question, Erin. 11.59 or 5 p.m.? I don't know. Go with 5. Go, go earlier. Do it on the 7th. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I can't answer your question about Miramar's offering a of Bio 107 online. Um, maybe one of our counselors could answer that because I'm not familiar with their Bio 107 class. Um, let's see. How can we apply if we want to walk in 2021 or the virtual graduation isn't for us? My parents want to see me walk the stage. I don't blame you a bit, Joseph. Um, my daughter's graduating from City this semester, and I want to see her walk the stage, too. Um, and so um, I imagine people will um, will want to do that. What we will do is um, we will we will figure out a way to communicate with those of you who um, who aren't able to participate this time. And we will take we'll keep the information um, available so that we will know. All right. One of our counselors is saying, yes, the Bio 107 class would be. Jason, um, you lost your password to the portal and your email has changed. Who wants to answer that question? Is that, oh, Raquel already answered the question. Email admissions, admissions Jason. So all you have to do is email admissions and, and you're good to go on that. All right. So thank you everyone for these fantastic questions. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to go a little different direction for just a minute, because I do think it's really important for us to be focusing on mental health. And so I would be very interested in knowing how people are managing um, your sanity right now. Again, keeping it civil um, and apolitical, if possible. But I do think it's important for us to, to share. Um, I am trying to take walks with the little people in my life. I'm trying to work out in the morning if I have time. Um, so I'm hoping uh, others of you will share what you're doing. Um, so uh, let's see, Noelia is asking, will her financial aid be affected by the excused withdrawals? Um, would anyone from financial aid like to answer that question? And Claudia is reminding us to please apply for graduation because you can't get your diploma without it. Yeah, student parking permits be required for fall. We haven't crossed that bridge yet. That's a great question, Aaron. Okay, uh, I will find out the answer to that question. Guided meditation with Headspace. Joe, I love Headspace and I use it too, although I figured out the other day I had signed up for the one that you have to pay for. So um, I don't know, I might have to go back to the free, the freebie thing. Normal routine other than driving, thank you. Gardening, going for walks, Zooming with friends. Yeah, I've been Zooming with my college friends. You can imagine it's been a minute since I've been in college. Um, and it's been nice to do that. I have a friend in Connecticut, another one in North Carolina, and we're on Zoom on Sundays now. So Animal Crossing, Gardening, Insight Timer, also great. Oh, thank you. 
So fall semester is going to be online. Yes, with some with some caveats, if we can get ourselves in person for some labs. Oh, Chris is uh, going for walks, connecting in his neighborhood and cooking up a storm. Nice. Jigsaw puzzle six. Wow. Bike riding. Uh, personal training. Jill. Nice. Jana. 10% Happier is offering free access to their app for educators. Thank you. Sunlight important. Chasing a baby around. Yes. An adorable baby, I might add. Thank you for continuing to post pictures of that lovely chubby monkey because he's adorable. Uh, walks, working out, trying to get certified for online teaching. I totally get that. You'll be happy to know Sydney will be even offering you more help with that. Coloring, Jessica Palmer coloring books. We have some of those too. Uh Kim, yes, I believe you are. You have an adorable baby as well. Dance breaks. I'm going to need to know more about that. Uh, let's see. Yard work, crafting, brain breaks outside with the kids, yoga, reading. Yes, baking. Johanna bakes. Oh, gosh, those pictures are awesome. Noticing living things. Oh, my gosh. I have the most beautiful dove that has made a nest right by our front door, and it's been a great science project between that and the uh, the bio waves that we're able to see at a safe distance in the evening on the beach has been some wonderful science opportunities for the little people in our lives. But watching this bird has been great and hoping every night that the raccoons don't get a hold of it. Um, eating Cheeto puffs. Okay, AS. <laughs> oh, I love it. House party app with the family. Loving that. Discovering TikTok. Ryan, I don't want to know. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, the bioluminescent waves at the beach have been amazing. Making masks. Thank you, Johanna, for doing that. Hanging out with family, working out, quilting. Nice. Netflix. Who's watching the Michelle Obama documentary tonight? Okay, now I have to put that on my list. So I just started. I just finished. I'm a big Harry Bosch fan. For those of you who enjoy uh, Michael Connelly books, um, that's on Amazon Prime. So I just finished that. And then now I'm watching All American on Netflix in case, you know, most of you know I'm of a big athletic supporter and athletics fan. It's a very interesting story. Um, so it's it's pretty cool. So, But I will definitely watch the Michelle Obama one tonight. Um, taking walks with the dog. Awesome. Yes, I, I hear that that red tide smells bad. Um, I'm over here in Claremont, Sydney, so I don't have to smell it. I just get to go see it and then drive back home. Oh, Nina's writing a family history and creating photo books for the young people in the family. What a great idea. I love it. Espen's on to Survivor. Virtual dinners with family. Larry's, oh yeah. Lance dance, last dance with uh, Michael Jordan. Yes, that's definitely on my list of things. Um, yes, for sure. Watching Riley Reed. Okay, I'll have to look for that one, Bob. Thank you. All right. This, you know what? This is a really wonderful way to. Uh, oh yes. So Alessandra, I love your political cartoons. They are amazing, and uh, can't wait to see you in person again. We we miss you, Alessandra, and the wonderful things that you bring to us. Uh, why is this in my recommendations? Ha ha. My ask what it is. Okay. Um, all right. Can we get more space on district email? Espen, great question. We are migrating to Microsoft 365 over the next month or so. And so I'm told, I'm told that that will mitigate our district email uh, size issues. So uh, th that should be coming soon. Um, that will be really helpful. So we can get you bigger Canvas sales and more email. You'll just, you know, have more time to do that. All right. So for my team out there, have we covered everything? If the team wants to post something they want me to cover, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, we are about 35 minutes in. So will that allow us to offer student emails? Brian, I sure hope that's next. We absolutely need it to be next for sure. Absolutely. All right. Yes. For sure, you know, we're going to work on more space for sure. Going to get that to happen. Anybody else with questions? All right. A big shout out to Hello Psi Beta. 
looking like it would be good to maybe look at some of these chats. Students need tech tutors. Okay. I know we have some MT2C people on here, so I'm going to ask Mark and the crew to reach out to you, Alessandro, to find out what you what that could look like, because we'd be happy to do that. Yeah. All right. More email space. Got it. Yeah. Are there need for faculty tutors? So we'll be announcing very soon um, a new program that's coming forward. And um, I don't want to steal the thunder of, um, of our Katie Palacios, but um, Katie and Kara Smolovitz, our wonderful DE liaison, uh, will be able to be talking very soon about a new program that we are launching to support faculty in this distance ed environment. Um, it will come out very soon. And uh, it's exciting because it will do a couple of things. It does not replace the district distance ed training, but it has various different levels of that. And so um, it would be good to uh, be able to take a look at all the different kinds of support that people are going to need. So, yeah, I think we need to take a look at those chats again. Uh, will students be able to order their textbooks online and have them shipped? Great question, Jordan. I am going to say probably yes, but I don't know if anybody from the bookstore is on here. Yes, the graduation announcement will be posted on the Mesa website. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we will have all of that out. We literally just locked down how to do this in the last couple of days, and we definitely will do that. We miss you too, Mary Gwynn. We miss you too. Uh, bookstore information coming too soon. Will international students be allowed to complete their courses in their country? I do not know the answer to that. Um, and I don't know if we have any of our international students folks on here, but I would suggest contacting the international students office. Yes. So Ina, did anyone ask if we can have scheduled time for fall classes? We have not asked that. The one, the one thing that we are, yes, we are missing golden scissors too, Ruth. One thing that we're looking at is if we do synchronous classes, we would want them offered at the time they're scheduled. One of the things that we're hearing from students is that um, some of the faculty members changed the time of the course in the spring. And so they ended up having two classes synchronously being taught at the same time. So we'll work with chairs and deans to make sure that's clear as we go through this. Again, I'm going to say, um, uh, so I'll just say that the, the program that's coming forward for faculty is called Mesa Building with Buddies, and it's going to be a peer-based support uh, program for uh, working through um, making these courses really wonderful opportunities. Um, but yes, yeah, synchronous is definitely an option, as long as it's synchronous at the time you said you were going to, uh, to teach the class. All right. We know that we do have some concurrent enrolled students from our local high schools that are part of us. We are going to continue our commitment to high school courses or to high school students. So, yeah. Yeah, that part's been a little bit difficult in terms of two synchronous classes at the same time. But honestly, when we left campus, you know, we, we did the best we could, I think, uh, to try to meet the students' needs. Um, okay. Any other questions? that we can answer for you. I'm going to wait a minute just to see if anything else is posted because I know you all have plenty of things to do. Not that I don't, not that it's not wonderful to sit here with you all. All right. Any other, oh yes, AS elections are this week. So if you are a registered student at Mesa, you should have received information on how to um, on how to do what you need to do in terms of uh, voting for AS. So please do that. The more students that, um, that, that join are better. Yes, Mary Gwynn, we are going to have virtual graduation on July the 17th and more information will be available. And in fact, not only we're having virtual graduation, Mesa College, for any student who wants it, is going to gift a cap and gown and tassel to any student who, 
who would like one. So will we receive information on budgets? Will they roll over? Um, so let me talk about budgets a little bit, because if you read the chancellor's budget message, you know that we're headed into a difficult budget time. Um, it looks as though the state of California is going to be short on much of its revenue. Um, so just wanted to let you know that um, budgets, will they roll over? I don't know the answer to that yet, Denise, because we will be getting fewer dollars in our discretionary funds. And so to roll them over would give you a false sense of how much money you have. So we would have to do our best to make sure that we are um, we are doing that responsibly. But we will get budget information out to you just as soon as we have it. Actually, Lorenz isn't on our um, isn't on our things right now. Uh, isn't on our forum right now because he's actually in a district budget meeting. So. Um, looks as though, yeah, thanks guys. Got a few more folks that are logging in late and probably found themselves here by mistake. All right. All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, oh yeah. Okay. Charlie classified Senate photo card fundraiser ends this Friday. Do you want to post a link in the chat? Do you, do you want to do that? If you do. I have not yet ordered mine. I need to do that. So um, it's exciting uh, to be able to do that. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jill, for saying that. It is Happy Teacher Appreciation Week. I've been seeing so many cool things on social media. Um, yes, Professor Colby, you will have faculty access to campus during the summer, not just to kind of come in and hang out, but for access if you would like to do some videotaping in your classroom or use materials that you think would be important to have. You can work with your chair and um, be able to access campus. So absolutely, again, with all the caveats of social distancing and all those things, uh, we are happy to have people uh, come to campus again within those guidelines. Um, we know that it's important to do that. Um, and we know that you have materials here that are really important for you to be able to use. So reach out to your chair and your dean and we'll make that available um, for you. All right. Looks like the questions are dwindling at this point. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and looks like we've got more stuff in chat that needs to be um, pulled out, please quickly. Thank you. Um, so thank you everyone again for what you're doing. Um, thank you for staying connected to this Mesa community. At this moment, there are 369 of you on this YouTube. One good piece of news is that um, the district was kind enough to expand our license for Zoom. And uh, we now will have the capacity to do much larger Zoom forums. So my only caveat with that is I do think that people get um, a little tired of Zoom and that's why um, we've been able to do this. And um, it's exciting that, that we are able to do this. So. Thank you to everyone. Uh, keep the faith. Keep keep moving forward. We're in this together. And I look forward to seeing you next time. We'll have our next forum in about two weeks. Uh, look for those posts and we'll get back to you just as soon as possible. So thank you, everyone. And I'll do it again. Love you guys. Love you guys. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you next time.